Well, good morning, C3. Welcome to C3 Live online. And if you're here in person, uh, we just appreciate you being here. And we just want to say welcome. Sunday, best day of the week. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Gary. Always have a lot going on. But this time, yes. just this, this week feels a little bit busier heading into Easter season. Mm -hmm. What's something we got going on today? So speaking of Easter, today we've got our egg stuffing party that is happening after service. So it's I like that we call it a party because it makes it sound like it's a lot of fun. It is going to be a lot of fun. It's it actually be great. is a lot of fun. That's true. I mean, I found out it can be for everybody. So it could be, you know, the kids can come and they can help. So what this party is, is to help us get ready, get all the eggs packed with candies that we're good to go for what? What's coming up next? Extravaganza. Mm -hmm. And we got 20,000 of these eggs. So I think we did some math. If we have 20,000 people help, one egg each. <laughs> so anyway, if you I can do, do that math. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you do plan on helping, if you would register on the app, because we do order pizza I mean, for people. Hey, well, hey, and it's St. Patrick's Day, apparently. I didn't get that memo, but it's been on the calendar for apparently <laughs> all year. All year. But you got the memo. I you, did. You brought the green. I did. You got some Irish in No here? matter how cold it is. No, Scott. Scott. Okay, there you go. Anyway, so extravaganza coming up this Friday. Lots of the other churches around here do it on Saturday. So we said, you know what? We don't want to compete. We want it to be as much of a family experience. You want to go to the other ones, great. But we want you to come here too. So we're doing it Friday night, yep. 7 to 9 p.m. And we do need a lot of people to help. So if you could, again, through the app, sign up to serve. 7 to 9 on Friday night. We're going to stuff those 20,000 eggs today yep. at the end of this service. Exactly. So when they walk out of that sanctuary, this whole foyer is going to be filled with tables, chairs, candy, mm -hmm. and hopefully some pizza. Ooh, yeah. And so, so why are we doing all this, Katie? To have a great way to invite people to come and learn about Jesus. And Easter is coming up, so what are our service times? Let's see if you remember our service okay, times. Because there's got, no slide for this. No, but there's three service times. We've got 8.30, 10 a.m., and 11.30. Nailed it. <laughs> Yeah, we did. I messed it up last time, but I got it this time. But we got it this time. And then, obviously, uh, we, we do all this because there is a risen Savior in Jesus. And uh, because we put our faith and trust in him, we're actually doing baptisms next week also. So lots going on. All of it's in the app. So if you could get in the app, let us know what you want to be a part of, and we will make sure that, uh, that we go from there. So we got, let's just review, because okay. that was a lot. That was a lot. Today egg stuffing, mm -hmm. 20,000, and then? And then we got extravaganza on Friday night. Yep, and then next Sunday? March 31st, Easter. Oh, wait, I think we skipped oh. baptism. 24th, oh. baptism, and then Easter. Lots Whoa. of things all in the app. <laughs> See you soon.
Good morning, everyone. We were just so thankful to see you and that you chose to be here this Sunday morning with us. Yeah, and if you're here, we might as well have some fun. And we're going to call fun in just a second. I'm going to ask our guests, if you're here for the very first time, I'm going to ask you to raise that hand. And then we are going to do our best 
to get this Frisbee into that hand. And I say we because Katie's in training right now. And the only way I can get her motivated enough to throw some Frisbees is to challenge her that I could do it better, which I definitely won't. But it's the only way she's going to do it. So I'm going to need some help from you. Guess if you could raise your hands for us. Oh, I see somebody pointing. All right, Katie, you want to go first or you want oh, me to go first? Okay. I mean, yep, she's all in. Katie's a competitor. I don't, I don't know that I'm all in, all right. but just, I'm going to need some help from the ushers. Look at, oh, be ready. he's going to oh, stand wait. up and give you a target. Look at that guy. If you know. missed that one, it's over. Nailed it. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you know the people next to you because you landed great. in their laps. <laughs> That's how we get to know each other. We're going to throw the frisbee to somebody around you, and you just have to dive in their lap and get it. All right, let's see if she can do better. Do we got any more guests? Come on, we got a couple no, more guests. A lot of friendly faces in here. All right, I guess you're just gonna have to. Oh, 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 you, oh, I got two, oh, two in the you're, back oh. row. You oh. gotta go long, go long. You, it's your turn. Oh. Come on, let's make this fair. <laughs> All right, kid, I'm, I'm going here. All right, Janie, you're pointing at her. You just want me to go to the usher? <laughs> yeah, I'll just go to the usher. Drop it in there, drop it in there, drop it in there. Yeah, oh, okay. look at that. Okay. You All right, I think there more? was one further down the road too. I need oh, to oh, good luck with that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, sure. I just advise <laughs> everybody in this whole section get ready to yeah, duck. Just duck. <laughs> here it comes. Um, here it comes. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Well, <laughs> this is how we get to know each other. Can you hand that to whoever is supposed to go to and introduce yourself? That's how we get to know each other here. Great. <laughs> I doubt it, but any other guests? I don't blame you. It's Gary's turn, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think I'm winning if we're keeping score at home, though. <laughs> All right, yeah, we do got a lot going on here, but uh, get online if you're here, or if you're here joining us online as well, there is a uh, connection card in that chat feature, and you mm -hmm. fill that out, we'll make sure that you get a disc as well. And everybody else should have a connection card when you came in, and that's mm -hmm. just for you to let us know any next steps you want to take, whether it's baptisms, signing up for any of the events we have, or prayer requests. We pray over these each Monday as a staff. Yeah, and guess we do something special with those connection cards. When you turn them in for the first time, we make a $10 donation on your behalf. And this month we're partnering with the Huckleberry House. And if you're not familiar with them, they exist to help end and prevent youth homelessness in our community. So thank you for partnering with us. A great way to give back. And we know this Easter season is coming up, and the real thing that separates our living Savior from all the other claimed gods is that ours rose from the grave, and we're doing baptism next Sunday, and that's symbolic of being dead to sin and alive in Christ. So if you're here today or even watching us online, and you've never been baptized, but you made that decision to follow Jesus, we're going to baptize next Sunday. So if you could sign up on the app, we'll make sure that we're ready for you. Mm -hmm. And then coming up on Friday, we actually have an egg extravaganza. It's this amazing time where we have our egg hunt at night. So that's seven to nine on Friday where you can bring all the kids are gonna come out with their flashlights with little headlights and search for all the eggs. And it's a great event to invite friends and family to, to get them to come to church with you as well. And then we're doing all of this because Easter's coming up. So this is a quiz. Katie, what are our Easter service times? Okay, well, there's going to be three. So we've got... You know because they're back here, but she can't see that. I could turn around and look, though, right? It'd be fine. <laughs> but we've got an 8.30, a 10 a.m., and 11.30. Nailed it. Better right. with details than Frisbees. But then... <laughs> We actually, uh, we do, we appreciate just all these environments. C3 gets to create environments for everybody to connect with God in an age-appropriate way. Mm -hmm. We get to do that in here, and we couldn't do that here without the heroes in our, uh, in, our, in our kids' area. Every week, so many volunteers show up to help serve in our kids so they can connect with Jesus in a very real and age-appropriate way. But then we also have youth on Wednesday nights. Pastor Conan, part of the 2X Vision, is all about next-gen. And so he's actually started a young adult ministry. And, and we know that if there's anything worth investing in, it is the next generation. So that's what we're trying to do with our 2X vision. So if you want to be a part of anything that we are doing here at C3 Church, we appreciate that. And as always, there are three ways to give. Yes, you can give on our website or you can go to our C3 app or you can text any dollar amount to 84321. Or if you're joining us here in person, you can drop your offering in the buckets as they're being passed around. And if you would now, would you welcome our pastor, Conan Stevens? Wow, all right, let's go. Yeah, well, again, honored that you were here. I, I realized today, once I got here, it was St. Patrick's Day today. Yeah, I've been pinched so much, I'm bruised all over. It's been a rough day. 
Uh, I'm just kidding. So uh, uh, anyway, we're honored that you're here, whether you're here in person uh, or joining us online. And again, we're in the midst of a series entitled Things Jesus Never Said. And so I think a lot of times Jesus probably gets blamed for a lot of stuff he didn't do. And he probably gets credit for things he didn't say. And so uh, we are looking at this, and here's why, again, these are such a big deal. You know, it's almost like if if we are heading in the direction, we want to follow Christ, we're heading in the direction, if we're a little bit off and we continue to go in that opposite direction, right, it ends up getting wider and wider till we find ourselves so far away from who Christ has called us to be. And so we're looking at some of these things that Jesus didn't say. Uh, You can go back and watch them. The first one, we talked about how Jesus never said, follow your heart. Okay? Jesus said, follow me. We looked in Scripture where the Bible doesn't say, God will never give you more than you can handle. And we talked about that, and everybody's like, ah. But the Scripture does talk about how you will never be beyond what God can handle. Last week, I appreciate Pastor Christy talking about Jesus never said, believe in yourself. He said, believe in me. Today I want to talk about another one, and this is, again, this may be one that you yourself have said. <laughs> it's probably one that somebody has said to you. It is one that kind of, it feels right when you say, like, oh, yeah, this, is, this, is, this has got to be right. It, it may even sound right, but today we're going to dig in Scripture and see um, what it is. Uh, this is one that if you go against, then, man, it's almost like our culture today will come at your throat, you know what I'm saying? Like cancel culture, like they're going to come after you if you kind of disagree with this one. And so this is a tough one. Have you ever heard it said, have you ever said, Jesus said, live your truth? Now that sounds right. Like, yeah, what's wrong with live your truth, man? Live your truth. Well, so I looked it up. Here's kind of what our culture would say live your truth is. Living your truth is a concept that involves being completely authentic, honest, and true to yourself. It's about embracing who you are, uh, what you believe in, and how you express yourself. Now, we may go, what's wrong with that? It doesn't sound wrong. Sounds right. Um, and I would say, if you're, if you're not following Christ, you could actually live whatever truth you want. <laughs> now, there may be some consequences here on the earth. For sure, there's going to be consequences in the life to come. But if you're a follower of Jesus... We are not called to live our truth, uh, and we're going to look at this. And so we said, what's the big deal? Well, let me kind of boil it down. Uh, I'm going to kind of take this word, first of all, truth. I think this is a word today that is very muddy when you say truth. Like, what is truth? What does it mean? What is it? Um, You know, how does this work? Uh, What is truth? So I looked it up, dictionary. Here's what truth is. That which is true in accordance with with fact or reality. Now here's the problem. We live in a culture today that says there's no such thing as absolute truth. Because you can't live your truth and I live my truth and they live their truth unless, you know, unless there's no absolute truth. Because what happens if what I think is true is completely opposite from what you think is true? Then who's right and who's wrong? Um, You know, today we live in a society that says, well, that's true for you, but this is true for me. And people go, oh, yeah, well, that's that's okay. Um, You know, that would be like saying, hey, these pants are black. And you look at them and go, no, they're yellow. No, they're black. You're like, no, they're yellow. You're like, no, they're really not. Well, one of us, both of us, if we're making a truth claim, can't be right. Somebody has to be wrong. And so today we live in a we live in a society and a culture that if if you say I don't think you know what you're believing is not true or somebody says that to you they can say well you're oppressive you're being bigoted you know I can believe whatever truth that I want in other words if we live live your truth live your truth says everybody's right whatever my feelings want is right Whatever I'm thinking today is right. Now, here's why it's attractive, because I can grab a hold of it, live your truth. I don't have to change. I can live out whatever I want to live because it's my truth. But there is a problem with this, and here's the problem, that if truth is subjective to every person, then if my truth, yeah, it's what I want, then I become the judge, I become the lawgiver, and I become the jury. 
which is kind of scary when you think about it. If there's no absolute truth, then there's no solid ground from which to build our lives on. And so first of all, you can't have two contradicting truths. There's something called um, the law of non-contradiction, which says if two people are making the absolute truth claim that are in exact opposition, they both cannot be right. Now, there's a lot of people that go, well, there's no such thing as absolute truth. When someone says there's no such thing as absolute truth, just simply ask them, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> because what are they doing? They are making a truth statement. This is absolute. There's absolutely no absolute truth. You're like, bro, what are you doing? You're contradicting yourself. Okay? So uh, there, is, there is absolute truth. There is truth. You know, in fact, the road out here, Waterloo Road, uh, I, I, I come down Waterloo Road to get to church here this morning, and there's a sign out there. And it says, 50 miles per hour speed limit. Now, if I said, you know what? I'm flying down that road at 80 miles an hour. The police officer pulls me over and says, you know why I pulled you over? I'm like, no. He says, well, you were going 80 and a 50. And I'm like, yeah. Well, the speed limit's 50, <laughs> officer. My truth <laughs> is it's 85. I was well under the speed limit. He's like, no, it's 50. <laughs> Look, we can disagree. I, officer, that's your truth, okay? You live your truth, I'm going to live my How many know that doesn't work? Okay? Then you have like absolute laws of truth that God has created like gravity. And if I was to grab a bowling ball and go, and someone goes, I don't believe in absolute truth. Really? Just stand right here for a moment. <laughs> now here's what's going to happen. If there is absolutes, I'm going to release this bowling ball upon your skull. They're like, I don't believe in gravity. It's really not going to matter what you believe. <laughs> because truth is truth. Right? Truth is truth. And so someday... There will be a judgment day where we stand before God and where truth is, good. people are going to be held accountable for what they believed as it lined up with truth. Not your truth, your truth, the truth. And so there is absolute truth. In fact, to say there is no absolute truth, we're actually saying there's no God. Think about that. Because to say there's no absolute truth, you're saying there's no absolute creator lawgiver, ultimate judge. That's what we're saying when there's no such thing as absolute truth. There's no governing authority. And to say there's no absolute truth is also, think about this, to put yourself in place of God. Because here's what you're saying. <laughs> I am all-knowing. And I set the rules. And I'm saying there's no God. And I'm saying there's no absolute truth. That is a scary thing. I don't know about you. I do not want to be my own God, dear Lord. I want a bigger God, right? There has to be. What happens when you get to the end of yourself? But to say there's no such thing as absolute truth is honestly, here's what you're saying. I know everything there is to know about the world and the universe and history and everything that could be known. I possess it. And therefore, I am making an absolute truth claim that there is no absolute truth. You're actually putting yourself in the place of God. Now think about that for a minute. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. And this is where many people find themselves, many people living as they're living out their truth, saying there's no absolute truth. As I say, I understand. The only thing you could say is, well, with my limited experience and knowledge, I don't think there's a God. Okay, you can say that. But to say, I know and understand everything, it's almost like if I drew a giant circle, let's say a circle as big as that screen, and I said, if that is all the knowledge and wisdom of the world and all of history and physics and space, and you name it, every category of every world, everything you could ever know is in that box. How much do you think you really know? I'd be like, I'd take out a needle and go, dink, and I think I overstated it, Okay. There's so much. For us to say we understand everything and then to make a claim like there's no such thing as absolute truth. And so here's what's crazy. With ab without absolute truth, then people can live however they want to live to fulfill whatever the desire, many times sinful desires, uh, many times that will hurt other people because they're living out their truth. Man, we need truth because we're building our lives upon something. And if we're building our lives upon something that's not truth, it's sand. It's not a firm foundation. And so 
I want to, in fact, if you grab one thing today, I want you to understand this. Here it is. There is truth, and his name is Jesus. There is truth, and his name is Jesus. And so Jesus, um, it says this. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. I mean, that's a huge statement. Jesus is like, you're looking for truth? I am the truth. In fact, Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I realize the world says, oh, all religions lead to God. Well, that may be their truth claim, but it stands in direct opposition to Christ's truth claim. Christ, Christ said, no, I am the way, the way to the what? The Father. I've heard it said, there are many ways to Jesus, but there is only one way to God. Right? Jesus said, there's only one way to God. It's through Christ. Now, you may have come to Christ different than I came to Christ, different than you came to Christ. We all come to Jesus in different ways, but there is only one way to get to God the Father, and it is through Jesus Christ. Um, so Jesus is real clear. He's like, all religions don't lead to God the Father. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is Jesus saying this is absolute truth. Now, we can choose whether to believe it or not. We can choose what to build our lives on, but this is what Christ is saying. And then I love the fact that, that we see this in Hebrews. It's that Jesus says, I, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, man, we could take that to the bank. You know, Christ is not shifting and all this. No, he is solid. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. His absolute truth is true in all times, in all places of the world, in all parts of history, in every culture, in every race, in every background. Christ is truth. So thank God he does not, he does not change. Not only is Christ Jesus truth, God's word, which Christ is the word, but God is, God's truth, his word is truth. Look what the scripture says in Psalms 119. It says, your word, O Lord, your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. And so really, to follow Jesus then, we have to line our lives up with his word. Because here's what happens. If, if we say, well, this is what I believe, this is my truth, we actually try to, we try to create something so that we don't have to change. And we're all susceptible to it. In fact, I want you to, I want you to understand this. We are, either, we are either transforming into Christ's image or trying to conform him into ours. Now think about that for a minute. It's pretty, it's pretty heavy. Like, and I think if we're not careful, we can try to conform the image of God, the image of Christ, to fit what we want, how we believe, Rather than us change to become like Christ, we'll try to change him without to become like us. That's what we do. That's what, that's what happens. Oh, I'm living my truth. Well, are we living my truth or am I living Christ's truth? And so I got to ask myself that. Lord, am I trying to make you into my image or am I allowing your precious Holy Spirit to help transform me into yours? If I'm being transformed into your image, that means I have to change Man, the gospel is very clear that we have to die to ourselves in order to live for him. That, that true life is found in us dying. You think about nature. Everything in nature, something like you think of a plant, you think of, you think of a seed. A seed falls to the ground and dies, and through that death comes a new tree, which brings fruit. Wow. It's like, so we're either transforming into Christ's image, or we're trying to conform him in to ours. And again, it's not about becoming, God didn't, Jesus didn't give his life for us to become a good person. I don't know how many I talk, people I talk to, they're like, well, I mean, I've seen people, oh, I'm a good, I'm a good person. They're like, okay, who's questioning that? I'm a, good I'm a good person, I'm not a bad, I'm a good person. Jesus didn't come to make us a good person. He came, us, he came to bring us from death to life. Right, Jesus, the relationship with Jesus is not about behavior modification, it's about life transformation. Christ is not about what we're, just what we're doing. It's about who we're becoming. We are to become like Christ Jesus. And so there is a battle for truth in our lives. In our culture today, it is a battle. I promise you this. There is a battle in your life for truth. And you will make the decision because God has given you free will. 
of will I choose to follow him or will I choose to follow my own way? And so there's a battle. We're either conforming or we're either transforming to Christ's image or trying to conform him to ours. And so I'm like, all right, Lord, how, so what, is, what, what, do we do, what do we do with this? It is a process that we have to walk through. I want to take you to the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, we see where Moses, kind of backstory, Israelites, a few years, a little bit before this, rather, was they were uh, slaves to the Egyptians, the world power, Pharaoh. They were doing all this crazy, man, slave labor. They cry out to God because they had turned their back on God. They cry out to God. God hears, sends Moses to come, and, man, through God's power, they are set free. Like, God does all these crazy plagues, and then finally they're like, okay, you can leave. They leave. They, here goes a million-plus people. Moses leads them out. They get to the Red Sea. <gasps> Pharaoh changes his mind, sends the army. We're going to die. God parts the Red Sea. The Israelites go through on dry ground, which would be kind of freaky. Huge walls of water like, uh, uh. They get to the other side. The Egyptian army's like, they try to go through, boom, wall, water collapses, which they found all kinds of crazy stuff at the bottom of the Red Sea, which really confirms it. You're like, man, they get to the other side, woo, God has done it. And then we see the Israelites, and they're wandering around the desert for a little bit because they're not getting some things right. You know, Moses actually goes to the, before the, goes to the, goes to the mountain, and he's like, God's going to give us some laws. He's going to give us some truth that we are to live by because God is wanting to take a group of people to set them apart to show the world this is what it looks like when, man, God's, God's creation walks in relationship with, with the Father in heaven. And so what happens? They, they go in, and Moses goes to the mountain, and this is where we find this story. Moses goes to the mountain. He's writing, man, God, God is actually writing on tablets the laws that they're going to live by. And here's what happened. Here's the people. Their leader, Moses, is on the mountain, and we see this in Exodus chapter 32. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron. Aaron's kind of like number two in charge. He's the vice president. I don't know. Uh, gathered around Aaron and said, Come, let's make gods who will go before us. As this fellow Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what's happened to him. He may be dead up there on the mountain. So Aaron answered them, Okay, take off your gold earrings that your wives, sons, daughters are wearing, bring them to me. So everybody took off their earrings, and they brought them to Aaron. He took what was handed to him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioned it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. They're like, what are you doing? Can you imagine this? You're like, take off your gold, and I put it in, like, yeah, here it is. This is the God. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow we will, we will, there will be a festival to the Lord. <laughs> Small L, okay, this is not the one true God. So the next day, the people rose early, sacrificed burnt offerings, and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. <laughs> That's not good, people. Okay. What did it do? Not, not. So they basically are like, God is like, we're in, we're in covenant relationship. I'm going to be covenant relationship with my people. I'm going to, man, we're going to do this thing. And what do they do? They instead fashion a God, small g, to fulfill their desires. Hey, we can continue to live any way we want as long as we like, oh, this, what are they doing? We're going to live our truth. They fashion a God into a form that they can live any way they want to live. So rather than them being transformed into the image of God, they then try to conform God into their image. And this is what happens when we say, well, live your truth. No, we're not to live our truth. We're to live His truth. When we live God's truth, it actually transforms us. And so I would challenge all of us today, right, because what happens is we're building our lives on what we believe is true. And that's why even like this series, things Jesus didn't say, is a big deal. Because we can grab a hold of things and we just swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. It's almost like we just step into the trap, and then we start building on top of that. We're building on not solid ground, a, not a firm foundation. Christ is the firm foundation. And so we've, we've sung about that before. So I love what, what Jesus, again, John 8, 32, he says, Then you will know the truth, 
and the truth will set you free. So let me ask you today, is there any area of God's truth that we've been trying to conform to our image rather than being transformed by His? You know, here's what we're realizing. Like, my feelings are not truth. Even some of my experiences may not be true. My desires may not be true. Okay? He is true. Truth has a name, and His name is Jesus. Here's a couple ways I would say, you're like, well, how do I know if I'm making God, trying to conform God to my image? Uh, one would be this, we, when we think we don't need a Savior. Listen, without Christ, we are destined for hell. Why? Because of our sin. Why would a loving God send us there? He didn't. What is hell? Separation from God. Who chooses that? We do. That's what's up. You can, you can choose it if you want. You can choose to be separate for eternity from me if you want. That's what God would, I've given you free choice and free will, but I hope you choose me. Yeah, I've got this big sin dilemma. So God loved us so much, he sent his son Jesus to make a way so that we could be forgiven because he wants to spend eternity with us, his creation. And so we can say, well, we kind of try to conform God into our image. Well, I don't need a savior. No, we need a Savior, because we have something called sin that was so bad, such a big deal, Jesus had to die for it. We can't save ourselves. We can't wash away our sin. We are transformed to be like Jesus. When, when first, we receive what he did on the cross. Uh, here's another one that maybe we're trying to conform God in our image. We try to justify our actions that the Bible calls sin rather than repent. Now, think about that. I remember I was talking to somebody, and they're like, yeah, you know, and they're like, man, I'm following God, but I got this one area, one area of my life, but, you know, me and, me and God, we have this agreement, see? I was like, wait, what? He said, yeah, so like God's cool. I realize it's sin, but I mean, it's, we're, it's, it's cool because I follow him in all these other areas. I go, okay, time out. So you're saying that of, man, God's truth is true, 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 but this one truth is not true for you. Wow. And you, out of all the people in the world, God has an agreement with that you can go ahead and do this because it's cool for you. You got like a get out of jail free card, like a free path to sin. Wow, I don't know. If it's like, Come on, man. I said, or are you trying to conform God into your image in that area? Ah. But do we do that? Do we do that? We try to justify our actions um, uh, to what the Bible calls a sin rather than to repent. Or maybe we think about, oh, well, uh, that we think ourselves right or better than the others around us. Or maybe we disregard certain portions of Scripture. Or maybe we take a piece of Scripture and try to distort it to fit what we want. Or uh, we overlook some things. But today, I want us today to think about ourselves, and is there an area of our life we are trying to conform God into rather than being transformed? Or how about this one? Maybe for some of us, when I have conversations that people feel justified to hate someone or a group of people or those people, you're like, really? In fact, I, I came across this quote, I thought it was good. You can safely assume You've created God in your own image when it turns out that God hates all the same people you do. <laughs> I've never, never seen Jesus talk about that. In fact, the people that were the sinners are the worst. Jesus loved them. In fact, they probably felt the most loved by him. He's called us to love our neighbor as ourselves. And sometimes people can conform God into, yeah, yeah, well, I'm all, you know, I put myself up here on a pedestal and everyone's that. What? I don't read that anywhere. You know, we are, yes, we are, called to be, we are called to be set apart. We are called to love. We are called to lay down our lives. So let me ask you again, are you transforming into Christ's image or are you trying to conform him into yours? This, the gospel to truly live it, it's not easy, but it's what Christ is calling us to. In fact, he says, if you try to, try to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for me, you will gain it. So Christ is like, you got to understand, if you will lay your life down for me, that's where you'll truly find true, li true life. And I think for, for too long, and for many of us, we're going around and we're trying to, this is what I believe, and maybe this is what I believe, and this is my truth, this is my truth. We're patching these things together to fulfill our own desires so we don't have to change, and it leaves us empty. It leaves us broken. We look at our culture today, it is broken. People are more 
anxious, depressed, man, disgruntled than ever before. Why? Because they're trying to conform God into their image instead of being transformed by the gospel, transformed by the power of Jesus. Jesus never said, live your truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. And if we grab a hold of that and we make Christ our truth, it changes us. Look what Jesus says, John 8. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus says, if you, if, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. How many of us have been building our lives on sinking sand? It all may look good until the storm shows up. Here's how you know if your feet are firmly upon the rock. When the storm shows up, it will reveal what your foundation is. It will reveal if your feet are firmly planted upon the rock of Christ. Notice the same storm hit the two houses. Jesus told this parable of a house built on the sand, house built on the rock. Storms came, the house on the sand crashed to the ground. The, the, the house built on the rock stood firm. When we go through difficulty, it reveals what our foundation is. Is our foundation the truth of Christ Jesus? Hear me today. There is truth, and His name is Jesus. And so the question is, will we grab a hold of that? Will we conform, try to conform Christ to our image, or will we be transformed to the image of Christ Jesus? Here's the goal. Now, I've been following God since like kindergarten. The goal is like every day, Lord, I want to look more like you, more like you. Do I got a ways to go? Yes. Are we all in process? Yes. Are we all being sanctification, like becoming more like Jesus? Yes. It's a process. But here's what that process looks like God reveals to us, ooh, reveals to us sin in our lives things we grab a hold of that's not true. We repent of it. We turn from it. We surrender it. And we keep walking toward Him. It's like a toddler learning to walk. They fall. We pick them up. Keep going. Their legs get stronger and stronger. They're running faster and faster. <laughs> Poor parents, right? So the kids do. That is truth. Like walking more and more like Jesus. So let me ask you this. What would be an area of your life that we're trying to conform into our image? Maybe we're like, yeah, Lord, there's an area I've not surrendered to you. God, there's an area I've not repented of. Man, God desires us to walk close in relationship with him. And as we come humbly, Lord, I desire to be transformed into the image of Christ. The good thing is we don't have to do it on our own. He's given us the Holy Spirit that resides inside of us who desires, he desires us to look more like Jesus, desires us to look more and more like him. Man, the early church they was the first time, I think it was in Ephesus, they called the believers Christians, which meant little Christs. Why? Because the people around them looked at them and they go, man, they look like Jesus. May that be the same thing. People say that about us. They look like Jesus. They can go through hell on earth and they still look like Jesus. Why? Because we're living truth. Jesus never said, live your truth. He said, I am the truth. And if we grab a hold of the truth, man, the storms may come. Okay, we're going we're gonna to weather it. So what are you building your life on? And is there an area of your life you are trying to conform, you've not yet let go of, you've not yet repented of? And I promise you this. If you ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you, Lord, what is an area of my life that I need to lay at your feet? He will tell you. Why? Because this Holy Spirit's role is to guide us into all truth. He is our comforter. He's also our guide. And he wants to lead us into truth. Who is truth? Christ Jesus. So what is it in your life that maybe today, if you were to let go of, if you were to surrender, if you were to repent of, would take you just one step closer to Jesus? What if we did that every day? Lord, what is the one thing I can lay down that I can take one step closer to you, Jesus? What is an area we've conformed, we're trying to conform God into our image rather than be transformed in? Today, can we lay that down? Hear me today. Jesus didn't say, live your truth. He said, I am the truth. I'm going to ask you if you would to bow your heads. Close your eyes. Maybe there's some here today and you go, Conan, I don't even really know this Jesus. I've never crossed the line of faith. I've never put my trust in him, but today I desire to. Maybe you've walked away from him and today you want to renew your commitment to Christ. 
Whatever the case is, I want to pray for you up here, you at your seats, between you and him. In fact, I'm going to ask nobody looking around. But if that is you today, and you go, today, I want to receive this Jesus who died for my sin. I want to be washed clean. I want to be made new. I want my relationship between me and God the Father restored because it was broken by my sin. But today I repent and I receive the free gift of what Christ Jesus made available through his death and resurrection. I want to know him. If that's you today and that's where you're at, nobody looking around, would you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you. Yeah, appreciate your honesty. Yeah, all over this room. Thank you. Yeah, you can place your hands down. Would you just pray this with me in your own heart and mind? Just say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying for my sin. Jesus, I confess and repent. Forgive me. Wash me clean. Make me new. Jesus, I choose to follow you. Give me the strength in Jesus' name. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe there's some others here as well. And you're, you're following Christ. Maybe you've just come to Christ. And you're like, but there's an area of my life that doesn't line up with truth. And today the Holy Spirit is convicting you. That's a good thing. Holy Spirit does not come with shame comes with conviction. Why? Because he wants to walk close with you. He wants you to let that go so that you can walk closer with the God in heaven who loves you. And if that's you today and you go, that's where I'm at today, he has laid something on my heart. He's convicted me. And today I'm choosing to repent and surrender it so that I can live in the transforming truth of Christ Jesus. That's you today, and the Holy Spirit's big or small, it doesn't matter. If he's like, he's convicted me of this, today I'm laying it down, repenting of my sin, and I'm running toward Jesus so I can be closer to him. If that's you, nobody looking around, would you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you. Yep, 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 yeah, all over this room. Yep. You can place your hands down. Father, give us strength, give us wisdom, give us discernment. Father, speak to our hearts through your precious Holy Spirit. If there's things we need to lay down, God, may we not wait, but may we so desire to live your truth, the absolute truth, the truth of Christ Jesus. Today we grab a hold of it. I pray, Lord, if we need to repent of something, may we simply say, Lord, wash me clean, forgive me. I surrender it. I lay it at your feet. Give me the strength to follow you. And may we continue to press hard after you. Lord, may we live Jesus every day. May we live your truth. Father, we love you. I speak your blessing over your people today. Favor, Lord. We desire more, more of you. Speak to us in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close with this song. Uh, I'm gonna ask our prayer team, if they would, to make their way to the front. If you need prayer, would encourage you to, to come as we sing this last song. Maybe God's spoken something to you. You need another brother or sister in Christ to pray for you, to lift you up. We would love to do that. Maybe you... An area you're like, I'm laying this down today. Maybe for some, you've given your life to Christ. Maybe you would love prayer for, or healing, whatever it may be. We would love to stand in agreement with you and pray for you. And so as the band sings this last song, I mean, if you need something, would encourage you to make your way to the front at this time. I'm going to ask if we would across this place, would you go ahead and stand as we sing this last song? Your name is the greatest, your name is 
stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cry. If you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lamb. If you walk in freedom, if you bear His name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Sing the song forever. shine a light on the areas of our heart and in our life that we need to change. Lord, I pray that we would move toward you in humility. Lord, your word says that you come against the proud, we lift up the humble. You oppose the proud, you give grace to the humble, your word says. I pray, Father, for each one of us that we would allow you to examine our hearts Lord, I pray right now in this moment that you would examine our hearts. 
can we just allow him to examine our hearts? Lord, I thank you that your word says you didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through you might be saved. Lord, when you reveal things to us, it's because you love us and you desire relationship with us. You desire closer relationship with us. Everything you do for us, Lord, it's out of love because you love us. You desire to walk in close relationship with us. So, Lord, today we just come humbly in your presence. You know, maybe this attitude of prayer right now, would you just, what is it that you need to lay at his feet? I want you to think about that. Almost, almost see yourself laying it at the foot of the cross. Lord, we receive forgiveness. We receive your grace and your mercy, which we don't deserve. <laughs> but we're so grateful. Lord, we receive it today, and we lay these things at the foot of the cross. We lay them at your feet. Lord, may we walk in your favor. May we, may we walk in your love. Lord, may we know you in a deeper way. God, I pray for the one that's maybe been building their life on things that aren't true. I pray, Lord, that today our foundation would go deep. This is built on the firm foundation of Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray for the one in this room that maybe needs a complete overhaul. They need a complete new foundation. Lord, maybe rip it out, start over. It's got to be on you. We have to build our lives on you. Otherwise, it's sinking sand. Lord, may we not conform, try to conform you into our image, but may we be transformed into the image of Christ. Father, we need you. I pray that we would live this out. I pray that you would speak to us all week, convict us in areas that need to be convicted so, Lord, that we can walk again in closer relationship with you. Father, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'll say this, you know, that's my prayer. May that be our prayer this week, not to live our truth, but to live to live his truth, amen? Amen, we're gonna do this. Uh, I am, I'd like to speak a blessing over you before you go as well. Uh, I will say when we walk out of here today, we're doing something called egg stuffing, <laughs> 20,000 eggs, and so there'll be pizza served. Many have signed up. If you're like, I haven't, it is a great opportunity to meet more of your church family, uh, having a good time around round tables, stuffing eggs. So if you got some time, we'd love for you to hang out. We do have a great time. We have a very fun church, okay? Uh, so I would encourage you to hang out. Uh, we're going to nail those 20,000 eggs quick. And we put each piece of candy in a weather-protective coating. Oh, sorry. Anyway. We have a good time. Uh, you might even be able to eat a piece of cake. Well, hopefully not. So anyway, we're going to have a great time right after this. would encourage you, if you have any thought about it, would encourage you to stay. And so with that, I would, I would love and be honored to speak a blessing over you um, today. So if you would just get in a place to receive. <laughs> I bless you in the name of Jesus. May the Holy Spirit of God speak very clearly to your heart this week at things you need to lay down at the foot of the cross. And may you simply walk in obedience. May you hear his voice clearer than you've ever heard it before in Jesus' name. May the truth of Christ and the truth of his word be so clear in your heart and in your mind, and may you follow it wholeheartedly in Jesus' name. May you be transformed into the image of Christ Jesus. May you look like him. May you sound like him. May you talk like him. May you think like him. May you give like him. May every part of your life be like Jesus this week. I pray God's blessing over you. May his peace overflow you. May his love pour out of you to every person you come in contact with. May you walk in the favor of God this week. May you walk in the blessing of God this week. I speak this over you. May you go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Have a great week.